G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. I thought it was time for a new little doggo pattern and I have been wanting to make a little Scottish Terrier like this for a while. A lot of you have made my little Westie and also I've got a little Yorkie just like this one. But my goodness, how well did this little guy come up? And he's the perfect little companion for uh, my little Westie. So you can check that out and you'll see her further along into the video. Now he's really, really simple to make, a very simple style body, but that beautiful outline. I've also given you a little coat, a little doggy coat pattern in there as well. He's got a little sporran, a tiny little sporran at the front there. Just really super easy to make even for beginners, a simple button attachment, so no, no jointing on this one at all. So I've got your free pattern all ready for you. You just need to find that link in the description box below. You can print out your free pattern templates. Everything is there for you. Do use the measuring bar that I give you on the side of those pattern templates uh, that show you exactly how big your pattern pieces should be. Generally, if you set your printer to print at actual size, or perhaps A4, give that a go and you just use that measuring bar and you'll make sure that all of your pattern pieces are exactly correct. I include all of my seam allowances in all of my patterns. So let's get busy making my beautiful little Scottish Terrier. Now let's start by having a little look at our materials and requirements for making our Scottish Terrier. Now, if you have made my little Westie, this one is put together in very much the same way. So, and they will make a beautiful couple. So the Scotty is a little bit bigger, about 5% bigger, because overall they are a bigger dog and a slightly longer dog. So we're going to start with our side body pieces. I've cut mine in what I call felt fabric. Now felt fabric is just felt fused to fabric using a fusible web or heat and bond and it creates a beautiful fabric which has some volume to it and it's also no fray. Because of the way we're attaching the head, we need it to be no fray. So, and I'm going with, rather than just making the body all black, I've chosen a nice dark um, tartan color, which is gonna work in really well. The rest of the dog I'm making up in black felt, but it's just a way to bring a print in. Also, I'm making my Scotty um, black, classic sort of black, but you really can make them in any colour because they're such an iconic shaped dog, they're instantly recognisable. So, um, and remember that Scotties do come in a, a brindle, a smoke colour, and actually a cream, a Wheaton colour. So, lots of options there for your felt. So, we've got our side body pieces. And then we need a body base, and that body base is cut from felt with fusible interfacing applied. You do need to use interfacing on this little project. And then we have our front center gusset cut in black felt with that interfacing applied. I've got black interfacing there, but it is interfaced. And also the back uh, gusset there for the body. We need a little tail, and the tail is cut from felt just with fusible webbing applied because we're not turning that through and we're going to be sewing a tiny blanket stitch on that one to add that little perky tail. On the sides of my dog, I've added a little heart detail and of course that's just cut from felt with the fusible webbing applied. You don't have to add that, but it really gives the impression, especially if you're using a print there, it makes it look like the little dog has got a coat on. Because I'm not doing a coat with this one. With this one, I'm going to be adding a little sporran at the front. So speaking of that, this is a little sporran which I'm going to be attaching with a little length of chain around his front to sit on his chest. It's going to just fold over. It's like a little bag. We're going to put a little detail on the front. So both of those pieces, your sporran front and back, are cut from felt with fusible webbing applied. And that is to just add a little bit of strength without all of the bulk. I'm going to be adding some detailing with a little ring there uh, it's a little just a little joiner ring for from jewelry i'll be adding a couple of tufts of pearl thread just to make a couple of tiny tassels so and um, as i said a little bit of chain i'll just use a little bit of old chain to string that around his neck you could really tie it on with anything that you like so let's move on to the head so the head we have our two front and back 
head pieces. They're both cut the same and they have fusible interfacing applied. Again, I'm using the black because I don't want that white core to show. Um, if you are using wh uh, white interfacing, that's absolutely fine. Because we're, I'm doing mine in black, I could have always just inked that up afterwards to cover any sort of white core. We do blanket stitch it anyway, so it covers most of that. So we've got our front face pieces, which are our face detailing. So our muzzle and our whiskers. Now you do need to cut this from felt with fusible webbing applied to it. You need to cut it in a color that's going to stand out. If you made it black, it would just get lost. There'd be no point to doing it. So I recommend a gray if you're going for a black dog. And then of course, we've got our little ear inserts there just for a bit of extra detail. Make those any color that you like, whatever's gonna work with your project. Because again, we're putting black eyes onto black felt would not be very visible. So I've cut, I've given you little templates for some little white eclipse shapes and we're going to be adding our tiny black buttons on top of that. And also we have a little template for the nose there, which we're going to press on and we're going to stitch over. So you can see that lovely Scotty look and the white behind the eyes is gonna give him a really soulful little look. We also need a button um, for attaching the head there. Just a two hole button will work really well. You'll need some pearl thread for doing some applique stitching if you're adding that heart. Also your extra strong threads for sewing. I'm going to be sewing most of the face work on the machine. So it's not all hand sewn, but we do need to do a bit of hand sewing, sewing in that base there. We'll need some clear craft glue to put that face together and also we'll be filling with polyester filling. So that's about it. So to start with, our first step, if you're going to be adding that heart detail, you can go ahead and press that heart into place. Now, I sit it in the middle, two centimeters from the base because you don't want it sitting up too high because remember the dog gets filled and it goes around. So it needs to be two centimetres from the base and just central on the body piece there. Do make sure that wherever you press it on the one side, you do it and mirror it on the other side. So with a hot iron and a protective cloth, I'm going to remove that backing paper and I'm going to position that to mirror that one, press it into place, I'm gonna come back and do our stitching. So it's just a standard blanket applique stitch that we use to sew this one on. You could of course do it on the machine. You could sew a, a very close zigzag satin stitch on the machine. I'm using white to really highlight the outside of that shape. And if you haven't sewn a blanket applique stitch before, I'll put the link up the top there for you to my tutorial that shows you how to do that. But I'm using a single strand of eight ply pearl thread, which I find is the best weight thread to use for this sort of embroidery. And I've got a knot in the end and I've come out, come in from the back and come out right on the edge of that heart shape. And this is usually where I start whenever I applique a heart, I always start here and work my way down to the point first. So my first stitch is going in right where I've actually begun. So I've taken a stitch the length I want which is probably only about two to three millimeters, keeping it nice and small. And I've brought my needle out through the loop. Pull that one in, travel along, keep your stitches nice and small, right on the edge there again, and bringing that needle out through that thread loop there, you can see, and pulling that in. So it's going to outline that shape beautifully and it's also going to bind those edges. So there won't be any fraying. You might be using uh, fabric for your heart rather than felt. And you can see there, that's just going to line that shape beautifully, just like this one. Once you have your appliques done, we can start putting this little dog together. So we are going to take 
our centre front gusset and we're going to put right sides together and you've got marks on your pattern templates that you have to match up. So we've got those two marks there at the front. I'm going to put a pin through there and I'm working on that centre gusset. So I'm going to pin that one down to match up all the way down to the toe. And I'm going to stitch, I'm going to overcast first, just do a, an overcasting stitch to hold it in place so that I can remove my pins. And then I'm going to stitch from that mark, four millimeter seam allowance down to the toe. And I'm going to sew that two times because we're going to be stuffing this one and we want that seam to be nice and strong. So make sure here that you go back and forth on your start and finish because we're going to be stuffing through this section here. And then once you've done that, you just repeat with the opposite side, remembering, putting right sides together, line up those center marks and stitch from that point down to the toe again. So that is how your front section should look with your two side body pieces there stitched into place. Make sure that you roll those seams out so that every curve is pushed out well. And our next step is to sew the center back seam. And we do that from the top point of the neck. Make sure that's lined up there, right down to the base there where the tail will be. And we're going to do the same thing, we're going to overcast that first, and then we're going to stitch that four millimeter seam allowance two times. Now, once I've stitched that center back seam, I've just taken out some of my tacking stitches at the end, at the end of the dog there, and opened that seam out so I can press it nice and flat. And now I can add my back gusset piece. You've got a mark right in the center there at the point. Take your pin through there and then you're going to take your pin straight through that seam at the back at your four millimeter seam allowance and that will anchor that in there. Now we just have to line up the rest of it each side. I'd like to go from side to side, so I'm getting it in nice and straight. Make sure that pin stays centered at the top. And keep going down each side until you've got both of those lined up all the way down to the toe again. So next I'm going to overcast this one in place. Then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how I back stitch this top curve in. So that has that back gusset just overcast into place. Now I will be sewing the lower edges on the machine. So from about here down and I will still sew those two times with that four millimeter seam allowance. But this little top curve here, you can't get under the machine and get a very accurate result. So I'm using my extra strong thread and I'm going to sew a stab back stitch. Another one of my stitches that I have on video, put the link at the top there for you to have a look at. Might be a bit tricky to see this because I'm using black on black. Um, that's why I go ahead and have a look at that video if you haven't sewn this stitch before. So I've got a knot in the end of a single strand and I've come in from behind. I'm just going to take one stitch and I'm going to put another stitch right over the top of it. So that's just a great way to start. And I've got my thread coming from behind. So I'm just going to travel along coming up from the underneath the length of a stitch. Keep them nice and small so it's a strong seam. My thread knotting up there. And then I'm going to take my needle back into the exit hole of the previous stitch. So coming from the underneath again, traveling along and then back into the exit hole of the previous stitch. 
So the stitch is completely linked. And you can really create a perfect straight line just as you would if you were machine sewing. I'm not sure that you can even see that, but you can trust me, it's the best way to sew that seam. So I'm just going to sew just around, really anchoring that center junction down to the other side. Then I will finish off those seams on the machine. Now we have that back gusset stitched in. Our little dog is starting to take shape and it needs a base. So again, you've got marks on your pattern pieces that you need to follow and make sure you mark in your front here. And this is our base section. So again, we're gonna put right sides together and we're going to line up, match up the marks, front and back. Put a pin straight through that center mark. And we're going to do the same with the back. I'm starting at the front here. We're just going to pin this in to fit all the way around and it will fit beautifully if you've kept to your seam allowances. And I just go from side to side as I'm doing that. I generally start at the front. I've also opened up those overcasting stitches just on the toes here on each of the foot pieces so that I can open those seams out as I'm stitching this base into place and it cuts down all of that bulk. So you can see that I'm just going to line it up putting those two shapes together. And I'm going to keep pinning that in. And then I'm going to overcast that all into place. You can see just how well that little base section fits and um, I have overcast that all into place. So now I'm going to do the same thing as I did with this back section. I'm going to hand stitch with my stab back stitch, just the top curves. And then I'm going to catch up the rest on the machine because I can easily tuck those sides under. Remember if you're doing a stab back stitch with your extra strong thread, you only sew it once. When you're working on the machine, you sew those seams two times. I've turned that body through now and been careful to roll out all of those seams there. So we've got a beautiful little body shape happening there already. And now we're going to fill that one. So the first thing I do though, is I do again, I open up my overcasting stitch on that center back seam that comes up the back of the neck so that we can push that seam flat because once we've filled the body, we're going to be closing that with a blanket stitch. But for now, we are just going to fill up that little body and we do want that to be nice and firm. You want to pay particular attention to those foot sections and up here, we want it nice and firm up through here. It makes adding all of your final pieces, adding your head much easier if you're dealing with a really firm packed body. So do take your wool felting needle if you have one, that's going to help you pack everything in nice and tight. And this is how we're going to be closing the opening. I can show you on my little Westie, I'm going to be closing the opening with a blanket stitch. You can see there, on that little westy, gonna stitch around there, they will add the head that way. So you want to fill right up to the top here, and then as we're closing this opening, we can also always add some more filling as we go. Okay, so that has that body all filled out, nice and firm. It's going to be a lot easier to sew on our tail if that back section is really filled out well. So now we're gonna go ahead and close this neck opening here. And what I'm going to do is you can see that I've used my felting needle just to form that stuffing up into that neck area there. It's still quite soft in that section, um, but we can add a little more as we go. So I'm just going to bring that up and I'm gonna line up that mark, the center mark with that center seam there. And just gonna throw a clip on there and that will hold that in place. And I'm going to sew this up with a single strand of pearl thread. I'm using eight ply here, 
going to start right down here where this seam opens, starts to open out. And I just want to tuck my needle in and come out in between those two layers there. I'm using black so that it's largely going to blend well. And it's just a standard blanket stitch. Again, just refer to my video. I'll put the link at the top there if you haven't sewn the blanket stitch before. You need to get yourself in a good position for this, bit tricky on camera. But I'm basically just looking to bring those two edges together. So my first stitch is going to go through all of the layers. And I'm going to bring my needle out through the loop. And that will bring those two edges together. Travel along just a little way. My stitches are probably about three millimetres apart. Bring my needle out through the loop. And you can see it's just going to bind that edge. It's also the reason why we use felt fabric because we can do it on a raw edge and it won't be fraying away. Very hard to see with the black, I'm sure. But as I said, just like this one, we're stitching around that whole neck edge. So this is how your dog's body should look. You can see we've got a nice firm neckline up there. As I was closing that one, I just used my forceps to tuck a little more filling in. So that's a nice firm base for us to add our head and we're ready to do the tail. We put the tail on now, get that done. It's easier to do and sew the tail on before the head goes on. So we've got our two tail pieces. Remember that they had fusible webbing applied and I've removed that backing paper. We've got a little mark on your pattern templates and we're actually going to be putting these together, wrong sides together because we're not turning this one through and we're going to sew that same blanket stitch that we did before. I'm going to put a little clip at the end there just to hold those edges together. And I'm using extra strong thread this time. Now there's a mark on your pattern pieces that tell you where we want to start. We need to be clear about starting exactly on that point. I'm going to just take my needle and come in through the center of that felt and just come out on the edge right where that mark would be. I've got a knot in the end of a single strand. Tuck that knot in there out the way. And we're just going to sew that blanket stitch. Start by sewing two stitches right on top of each other, just so that that end section, which we open out to add to the dog's body, holds nice and firm. So this time it's a very, very small blanket stitch, but it's going to bind the edge. The fusible webbing is just there for a little bit of extra strength. You can see I'm keeping that nice and tight to that stitch. Again, it's very hard to see on the black. I do apologize, but it is a Scotty after all. Um, just check out that video link that I gave you if you need to see how to sew a blanket stitch. So I'm going to continue sewing right the way around until I get to the other mark at the top there that I've got marked in place. And I will finish off with again with two stitches on top of each other. So once you have that all stitched, you can go ahead and stuff the end of that tail. Now you only fill it up until your stitching lines because this section we open out to be able to add it to the body there. See it opens up like a little butterfly. I've used my felting needle to pack all of that in there and we're actually going to take our clear craft glue and we're going to add some just to those little wing flaps there. And we're just going to glue this one into place. It's going to make it a lot easier for us to actually stitch it. right down into those corners. 
And we're going to add it just as we have with the little Westie tail. I might just pop her coat off so you can see that. You see how we've split that in half and settled it over the bottom there. And the little tail curves forward. We're going to line it up with the centre seam and set it right at the base there. Right on the base. Everything pushed down. And now we're going to secure that with a few pins. So it's really pushed well down. And we're going to let that dry completely before we come back. Make sure that's all lined up. We want a lovely show ring tail. And if you stuff that nice and firm, it's going to sit up beautifully. So just pins all the way around while that's drying. We'll come back when that's completely dry and we will stitch it in place. So now that tail glue is nice and dry and I can remove a couple of the pins to get started. And we're going to be sewing this on. We're going to be sewing it on with a blanket applique stitch, but we're using it on a curved a three dimensional uh, body. So it's just exactly the same, um, except for when we're not working flat. So I'm gonna start with a single strand. I'm using extra strong thread. You can use an eight ply pearl thread if you like. I'm gonna go in at the very apex here of the tail and I'm just going to come out here right on the edge creating a tiny seam allowance. It's probably only about two millimeters. And we're gonna tuck that knot inside, right up inside. And then we're gonna turn this one over. And we're just going to sew the blanket applique stitch. It's the same stitch that we used here. And I'm going to dive in with my needle and come out right on the edge of that toe. You want to make sure that you're catching some of the body fabric on the underside, because that's what we're trying to do, is sew it in place. Bring my needle out through the loop. And we're going to be able to do that right the way around. And it's going to secure this tail in place and it's also going to give it a nice binding edge very important that you catch the fabric on the underside of the body, otherwise you're sewing it to itself. Bring that needle through the loop. Again, tricky to see with the black. Now I find it fairly easy to sew on using a normal needle, but you can have your curved needle ready to come in and get some of these tricky places as we're going around. Cause we're just going to sew this stitch right the way around till we come back to here. We can cast off and hide the knots up in that hole there. Best way to show you is with the little Westie where the stitches are more obvious. So you can see this is what we end up with. And it's a nice, neat and tidy finish. So there we go. Beautiful little Scotty body all ready to go. Look at that lovely upright tail. So we're gonna put that body aside cause we're gonna start work on the head. So you've got your front and back head pieces. We just need to have one of those. They're both the same. We take our muzzle detail piece, remove that backing paper and we're going to press this one into place. You can see exactly where it lines up. It lines up with the base here, right on the edge. And we're going to press that one into place using a hot iron and a protective cloth. Now that I have that um, face piece pressed into place, I've gone ahead and taken my ruler and I've drawn a line straight down the center. You'll see where your center points are at the top of that brow and the bottom of that lip. So I've just used a heat erasable marker because what I'm going to do now, of course, I'm going to sew this piece in place. I'm going to be using a tiny stitch on my machine and I'm going to sew just a straight stitch very close to the edge all the way around that template. Don't worry about these sections because they're going to be part of the seam. 
So just this lip line here and all around the top and I'll use a matching thread for that. But for the centre line here, I'm going to stitch that in in black just so that we get that beautiful parting look of the fur and a central lip line. My stitching is done on that first centre muzzle detail. My next pieces to press on, which I have done, are those ear pieces. And you find that they are shaped in a way to fit the outer ear and you should have more space at the side here, just for that little realistic look. I've also gone ahead and pressed into place my two white circles for the eyes. Now I'm using this because I'm working on a black felt and adding black button eyes. So you might be making a white dog and don't need to use these. I actually don't uh, stitch these into place because the button will hold them in place, but do make sure that they're really, really well fused into place there. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and stitch just the same as I did right close to the edge, again in a matching thread around those ear sections. All of this stitching can be done with a blanket applique stitch if you like by hand. I just really do like the neatness of the machine. So if you're, if you're pretty good on the machine, you'll be absolutely fine doing this one. So, so our final piece to go on is our nose piece. Now you need to be careful to position that one to sit just five millimeters from the base of the lip line here. You don't want it sitting up here because Scotties have a longer muzzle. So we want to indicate that there. We don't want a long uh, top lip line. So I've pressed that one into place. I've gone ahead and stitched around that just with my straight mas machine stitch again. You could sew stitches over it as you would with a teddy bear nose with your pearl thread, or you could blanket applique it on. I'm just keeping it all very quick and easy here today. So now we're going to take our back headpiece and we're going to put right sides together. We add the eyes after we've put the head together because we get some nice pull in on those eyes that way. I'm going to line up my two centre marks on the chin. I'm just going to pop a clip in there and we're going to sew the seam from the lower edge of each ear. We're going to start here. I will overcast it first right the way around up to the low edge there of the ear. And then I'm going to machine stitch with the seam allowance to three to four millimeters right the way around. And I do do that two times and do make sure that you reinforce your start and finish because we're going to turn this one through. So I've gone ahead and turned that little face section through. Do make sure that you go ahead with your knitting needle or something like that and push out all of those curves and you want to roll those seams. So that's that beautiful Scotty shape that we have now. And now we're going to fill that head. So we're not filling it up to be a big sort of voluminous um, pillow. We actually want to keep it all quite flattened. So it gives you an idea here with the little Westy head. So just enough filling to plump it out. So now we take our forceps, which is the easiest way to fill this up. And we're going to be going straight down to the base there, holding that as we go, filling out that chin section, the cheek section here. And this is where your wool felting needle comes in really handy because it's quite a big opening at the top here. And that stuffing tends to want to creep back up you can be tucking it in as you go. You want to fill right up to the top here. We're going to be gluing these two ear sections closed, but you do want to fill right up the top. We're just going to be closing across with a little blanket stitch there. And you need enough volume in the head so that when we add the eyes, we're gonna get a nice sunk sort of a look like we have here with our little Westie. So I'm gonna get that one filled up to the top and I'll keep it all nice and tidy with my felting needle. So here is how that little head should look. Just enough filling to plump it out. You can see from the side view there. And enough that when I put those eyes in, I can squash that in and we'll get some nice depth in the eye socket there. I've used my felting needle and that's helped me tuck everything in because we're going to be stitching across the top of the head there. And now we're just going to glue 
these ear sections together. You want to have some little clips ready because we're going to clip them. So you just want to add some clear craft glue just on the back of that ear, right down to the base. And just join those edges together, make sure they're well lined up. The clip is perfect for this. Put one in there either side, right down at the base. And then we're going to do exactly the same with the second ear there. We need to let this dry absolutely completely before we come back to stitch it. Again, lining up those ear tips perfectly and the base of that ear and keeping it all nice and flat. My clips into place. And then we can just set that aside. There we go. We're just going to set that one aside and let that dry. And in the meantime, we can start work on our little sporran. So while those ears are drying, let's do some work on our little sporran. Now I'm actually using for the front of mine, I've taken just a little jewelry connector ring and I've just threaded some pearl thread strands on it to create three little tassels. They often have, sporrans often have little tassels hanging down. They're made of all sorts of things, sometimes little bits of fur, sometimes feathers, all sorts of things. I'm just going with the scotch thistle sort of color. So I'm bringing in that purple and green and I've just tied them on, three of them there. And now I'm just going to add this to the front of my sporran right in the center. But I want to make sure first that I know exactly where that top flap is going to come down, which is going to fold over here. So I want to sew this one just below that. And it's just a couple of stitches either side of that ring on the front here is going to keep that in place. So I will do that first. Now you can decorate the front of yours with absolutely anything you like that gives this sort of indication. But it is a good idea to do something that has just a little tassel, that sort of look. So a couple of stitches here at the front is just going to keep that into place before we put this one together. So there you can see I've got that little bit of tassel detailing in place. I can trim those off when I've stitched that together. Um, just even a little ornate button to suit would work. Um, it just needs to be something there. You could also sew, when we're sewing this one, we're sewing it with a blanket stitch to sew these edges together. You could do a beaded blanket stitch, which would give a little bit more detail to the edge as well. All depends on the look you're going for. So I'm going to sew this section onto the little bag. It's, it's basically a little pouch. I'm going to start at the edge, go in the center of that felt. I'm going to tuck that little knot in so it can't be seen. We're going to be folding that flap over anyway. And we're just going to sew these edges together. We're actually going to go all the way around, including the top flap. So a blanket stitch is just as we've done before on that neckline on the body. And we're going to keep our stitches nice and even. Just using that red for a contrasting look because it's going on the black on the front of the dog. And that's just going to give us a nice little finish. We are going to be adding just a tiny little bit of stuffing to this little pouch just to give it that little bit of volume. And you can add this pouch to the, your little dog with anything you like. I'm just using, again, a few chain links from some old jewelry. I always keep old jewelry pieces for this sort of thing. 
can see that's just going to have a lovely little effect. And I'm going to continue on all the way around and also all the way around the top flap as well. So that has my little sporran pouch stitched with this little bit of detail there. I'm just going to add a tiny little bit of filling to that. Really not much at all. Just want to give it that little bit of volume. Again, I can take my felting needle just to help me tuck those fibres in. And then I'm going to be able to close that top flap down. Now, the way you attach it to your dog is entirely up to you, but I find the easiest way, as I said, I'm going to be using a little bit of old jewelry chain. So I'm going to slip my chain through underneath there and then it will go around the dog that way, around the back of his neck. You can do that with any kind of braid or trim, might have just a tiny fine ribbon, something that works with your project but I find that's the easiest way. So I am simply going to secure that little flap in place just with one stitch from behind in a matching thread. You could add extra detail there. So you could add a bead there at the front if you want to make it look like it's secured with something. Um, but that's just gonna hold my little bit of chain in place and we will add that when our dog is all completed. Those ears are completely dry now. So now we're just going to stitch around the top of the head to close the top of the head. Best way to do that is with pearl thread and I'm using an eight ply and a single strand. I've taken my needle in through the top of the head and I've come out at the base of the ear. The knot will hold in there and will be nicely hidden. And now we're just going to go ahead and sew a blanket stitch. Of course, I'm using black. I'm going to sew a blanket stitch right around the edge of each of those ears. Keep your stitches nice and small here and nice and close together. And that's just going to finish that off lovely. It'll cover up all of our raw edges. As you get to this section here and you're going across the top of the head, you just need to pull that section out flat and you'll be able to stitch straight across and then continue on down to the base of the other ear. Our final step with our little Scotty's head is we're going to add those buttons for the eyes. Now I've got a doubled strand of extra strong thread here with a knot in the end and I've made my two little marks. Now they're at the top and closer to the inside. We're gonna be pulling them in like this. So you're going to see, we're gonna get a lovely result with that whites of the eye showing. So we're gonna start at the back of the head, we're going to come in behind, from behind and come out one side of that spot that I've made for my eyes. I'm using very small little doll buttons for my eyes, if you can get them, they're very, very handy for a lot of my projects. I really just want to come out exactly on the right spot there. Pull that one all the way through and that knot will hold at the back. Don't worry about the knot showing because we join the head onto the body at the back here and that won't be seen. So I come in through one of the holes at the back of the button and then I'm going to go back in the other side of the button. So I've got that button nice and secure and I'm going to dive back in to the head and come out at the back again in the center there. And I want to really pull on those threads. You can see I've managed to pull that iron in nice and tight. 
Now while I've got that tension happening there, I keep that tension up and I'm just going to secure that with a stitch or two just so that it stays pulled in. See, that's just going to hold that in place. I might just do another one just to be sure. Pull on both those threads. So that's kept that eye sitting nice and deep in the socket. So now we're going to go back in. We're going to do exactly the same thing with the other side, coming out just this side of that mark there. And adding that second button. So our final step with our Scotty is to add the head to the body. So I've got my medium sized doll needle here and I have a long doubled strand of extra strong thread. I find that a doubled strand is more than enough. It's just a very small dog. And we're going to be adding the head to the front. We're going to be going through with some threads right through the back of the head and securing it with a button on the back. So bit tricky to show you but I'm going to put it together and, and show you how that looks. Now positioning is very important. It actually sits quite low and looking at it from the back that's about where your head should sit. You don't want it sitting up too high so and the button will push all the way through. So we just start, you can put a little mark on your back of your head um, if that helps you position that. Putting it on and getting it in the wrong positions, it's not a big deal, but so easy just to pull the threads out and reposition it again. So we're gonna start with the button and we go through one of the holes of the button. We let that just sit there and then we're going to just position that button to get an idea of where that's going to sit. And I'm just going to take my needle straight through and making sure that I'm coming out straight, that I haven't taken my needle up on an angle. All the way through, we get to the back of the head. I've got my pin there, so I know exactly where to take my stitch. And I'm going to take just a big stitch across the back of the head. Make sure that you're going across nice and straight and then you do have a decent chunk of that head. I'm going to travel that across. We're going to go back in again, the other side. And then we're going to come out at the back, straight through and we're going to go Come out the opposite side and through the other hole in our button. All sounds very complicated. It really isn't. It's just a bit clumsy to show you. Once I have it all hooked up, I will show you how that looks. So you can see what we've got there is a little dog's head, secure on the front. If you look at it from the side, you can see exactly how I've done that. I've gone through one hole of the button all the way through the body neck section, taken a stitch across on the head and back traveled through again. So you can check your head position now. We can really pull that in, tie that in and check that that head is right. As I said, it's absolutely nothing at this stage just to pull it off if it's not right. Um, but if you're happy with that position and I am, I've got nice movement there with the head I'm just going to really compress all of those layers 
and I'm going to keep my thumb on there. I'm going to knot that off nice and tight and I will knot that off about four times before snipping those thread ends. So that completes my beautiful little Scottish Terrier. Now I've gone ahead and added his little sporran just with that little bit of chain. Like I said, you can see that back neck connection there. Beautiful shape and form and we've got that gorgeous little head tilt. So now if you want to make up a coat for him, just like his little Westie friend, I have included the coat pattern for you in your pattern templates as well. I'm going to put the link at the top there for you for the little Westie project. If you are going to make him a coat, you won't need to put that detailing on the side. Um, and if you are making a coat, I think you're best off uh, leaving off the sporran. It could get a little bit congested there. Totally up to you. Have a play with it. You know, it, you know I love it when you play with my patterns. So if you haven't made my Westie, you've got to make the Westie to go along with him. She's just gorgeous. And then I realised, of course, we've got that beautiful little Yorkie as well. So look at the three of them together. Fantastic. I just love the Terrier group. So looking forward to seeing all your beautiful loved up couples and uh, in all of your different colours and designs. Thank you so much for joining me and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. So thank you for joining me today and seeing little Scotty come together. I must say that I have been absolutely thrilled with the response from my little armchair pin cushion. So many amazing little interior designers out there I see with some incredible uh, chairs. So many of them I want to put in my own lounge room. Um, so really exciting to see and thank you for sharing them on our Facebook page. If you haven't joined our Facebook page, we're a big fun community, come along and join there and you can share all of your creations that you make out of my patterns. So I'm looking forward to seeing little Westie and Scotty couples for sure. Um, also, if you want to step up and perhaps make some more advanced art dolls um, and some realistic animals, you can join my masterclass. I'll put that link down below there as well. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you on Instagram. If you want to see a little more of my work, people often ask me what else I do. I am an illustrator. If you want to see any examples of my illustrative work, come along and check my Instagram there. And if you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, Instagram is the best place to do that. I will always see your messages if you message me there. And there is the Instagram um, link there. So looking forward to chatting to more of you. Tell me in the comments what you think of this little one. Um, looking forward to creating many more things for you all. Everybody have a fantastic creative week. Stay safe most of all and remember to pay all of those good things forward. Until next time, it is Huru from me.